Hi everyone. Um, I think we, I think I know everyone from last time. Um, I see that my coworker Tamson is trying to connect. She's been working with me on the housing production plan for this town and she just finished um, the update for the open space and rec plan for the town for Waitley. So she's been pretty familiar with the data um, for Waitley. So she, I brought her in to help me out. So whenever she connects, you can say hello. Um, and then I may have another planner from the COG joining us. We have a new employee um, who's gonna be working on housing issues. So she might be jumping in. Her name is Andrea, just to kind of observe and see how our housing meeting's going. So she's gonna be taking over some other meetings for other towns. Um, so, um, all right, so let's get started. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I got some good feedback on the survey and on the outreach efforts that we're gonna be doing. So I appreciate that. Um, Fred, thank you for sending me information about the survey, uh, the senior center survey and some of the other documents that you sent. I appreciate that. Um, on Friday, I sent out a draft survey that I'm hoping to finalize today. That's what our, our main goal for today is, is to finalize the survey and to confirm how it's gonna get distributed to the town um, and to the residents. And so those are the two primary goals. And then um, if we have time, I'd like to then turn it over to Tamsin. She's been updating uh, section one and section two of the plan. And so she's gonna let you know some of the findings we've got so far in terms of some housing income stats and basic affordability information that we've been um, finding, summarizing for you guys. Um, okay, so does anyone, oh, first, um, before we get into the agenda, which is approving and reviewing and approving the minutes, does anyone have any thoughts or comments or things they'd like to bring up for the meeting today? Um, one thing I just wanted to note for everyone is that um, when you reply all for responding with comments, um, it actually violates open meeting law. So when you're responding with comments to any staff members, just make sure that you're replying only to the staff member. Brad, I think your voice, is, you're, you're doing the Mickey Mouse voice again. All right, when he joins us, we'll make sure we get back to him. Um, do we? Uh, I, you know, while we're waiting, is Brant. I mean, I did, I know it was very late in the process and I did send out an email earlier today. Um, and I guess I did want to get some clarification. I mean, I get the feeling like the survey is kind of, the train is down the tracks, surveys, nope. well, but um, this, question about who we're targeting with the survey loomed large in my mind, you know, the, and I just ended up, the more I looked at the survey and thought about all the different questions and thought about like, well, this is just going to current residents. And I ended up having just a lot of, I might say misgivings and I was trying to be constructive, you know, that I understand the goal here is to not derail things, but to offer some helpful, you know. So, yeah, so I mean, that's, I had this sort of broad set of this broad topic, like, are we, is it the case that we're really just going after current residents? What are we doing about all the prospective residents? And how does thinking about the survey as just targeting current residents how should that influence our choice of questions, especially if we're thinking that we may have a, it, have a challenge with getting a good response rate? So, um, uh, well, I don't want to get too into details yeah. because I want to go on through the, the minutes yeah. and then, but I do want to, because I, I printed out your email, which is actually really great. And I wanted yeah. to go through it because there's some really good thoughts there. Um, there's always a perennial question of how do you capture everybody? Um, there are ways of doing it. Um, we, part of it is just data research. So Tamsin has been collecting a lot of the statistical data for not just the town of Waitley, but also surrounding local towns and then broader at the regional scale. So we kind of know who lives in the area that needs housing. So that's one way to look at it is um, not only do we know who currently lives, we also know projections, how many people are gonna be coming 
but also how are they aging? So we may have this much 50 year olds now, but we know that we're gonna be getting these perspective 50 year olds 20 years from now. So how does that influence housing? Sure. So, um, and then also um, Fred had pointed us in the direction of the South County, uh, they did a senior study um, survey recently. We, and we tried contacting them for the survey results. The results aren't quite ready yet, but they're going to be sending them to us when they are. And hopefully that will inform more in terms of not just the Waitley residents, but the wider region. So unfortunately, I think that's the best we can do, um, but I'd love to hear any more ideas you have um, that may augment that. Megan, is, is this yes, any better now? Can you hear me now? Perfect. Okay, I, I you touched on uh, the uh, information that the Franklin County, that your office has on, on housing needs, I think for the, for the county, I think that's important to consider in here because Whaley is only a small portion of Franklin County, and a, most a lot of people in Franklin County would may gravitate towards Whaley for housing needs. So I guess part of that maybe answers answers uh, Brett's question. The other thing that, that may be useful, and I guess maybe it's an indication of who responds, is is the exercise going through right now in Sunderland of trying to rent them apartment units for low income housing. I mean, what kind of response are people getting? Uh, is it overwhelming or are you begging for people to respond? And maybe where are then people that are responding? Where are they from? Are they Franklin County or are they from Springfield looking for cheaper housing? Uh, I, I don't know, that may uh, just, just a thought to, to look at the results we're getting from that from that uh, housing project. And I don't know if there was others like that in the last say five or 10 years, uh, other than maybe ones in, in Greenfield probably has had some or Northfield or the, the bigger communities, but if smaller towns have had a, uh, projects like that, where, where, the, where are the responses coming from? Yeah, good point. So I know the housing authority, they have a long waiting list. So the demand is there. I don't know if they know, I'm sure they probably know, but I'm not sure if they can tell us in details of who, who, they, who is waiting for the housing um, in terms of personal information, but maybe we could get location of where they currently are coming from, because that might indicate, you know, is there a greater need, not just in the county, but everywhere. But that's, I wrote that down, that's a great point. We're gonna, I'll follow up on that with the housing authority because they may have information on that. Okay. Let's circle really quickly back to the agenda. Um, the first item was approving, reviewing, approving the minutes. Um, I don't know what your committee usually does if you have like a formal protocol, seconding and motioning. Um, but if anyone has any questions, let me know about the minutes. Otherwise, um, let me know how you want to proceed with that, Hannah. So I'll suggest I've I read the minutes. They were, I think, appropriately, you know, high level. I didn't see any errors, so I would move to approve the minutes as written. I'll, I'll second that motion if you need a motion to approve. We're Great. kind of self-governing. So <laughs> Perfect. No I saw every, every committee is different. So whoever who's ever moved to make a motion. That's Fabulous. That's how I like to be. So um, all in favor of approving the minutes. All right. You know all right. It. Because we're remote, we need to do a roll call vote. So right. I can do that quickly. Um, Brant? Aye. Natalie? Aye. Monty? Aye. And Fred? Yes. Awesome. Thanks, guys. OK, great. So let's then pivot to this actual survey. I'm going to share my screen and pull up the survey. Um, and just to recap what we talked about at the last meeting was um, making sure the survey was short and sweet um, with really just the essential questions on there to boost response rates. Um, we had talked about doing paper surveys and online surveys. Um, Tamsin, she helped with the open space and rec plan survey and most of them are, um, they did paper copies, but most of them were filled out electronically. So I think We'll definitely certainly have paper copies available, but I think that it's okay to lean on the electronic version because they got a pretty good response rate for that. 
Um, and so with that in mind, um, what I wanted to do, at least for the paper copy, and then if there's any flyers that go out or um, the newsletter article and the scoop, if we get that in there, this is kind of the intro that would go along with the survey explaining what we're doing, why um, I'm open to editing that. Feel free to let me know if you have any comments on that kind of opening section. Um, I, I would I would like to think people would look at more than just five years. I, I think that's too restrictive. It may take five years to get something going. Uh, I don't know how you would word that or future years or five years and beyond or something. Sure. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. So we could do maybe and beyond the um, yeah. the actual requirement for the housing production plan is five years. So I think that's why it's there that you have to get it reapproved every five years. Oh, okay. But we, but I think it's important to recognize that this is also long-term recommendations, not just the immediate short-term ones. Um, Mont, I forget. Do you go by Montserrat or do Mont? Either it Monty or Montserrat. Monty, either. Okay. Go ahead. What What do you have to say? I just want to let you know that the um, the next deadline for the scoop is May 18th to get articles in there. Great. That's what I had. I uh, was one of my questions I had for everybody. And then I have as a contact information that Joyce uh, Fortune is that the right person to send it to? Okay. Yep. All right. So um, I will coordinate with her and make sure we get something in there on that. Would, would it be worth in this introduction talking about the uh, trends and and I guess aging? I guess the the community is aging more and. And uh, what was the and the population trends? Are we increasing population wise? So is there? Um, we could put in the fact that the population is aging. It's kind of mixed right now whether the population is growing. Um, Tamsin, correct me if I'm not, but I think projections show that right now the town is projected to decrease in population except that those projections don't take into consideration the, the COVID pandemic. And so we're not quite yet sure how that will balance things out. You talk sale price for Hampshire County. Oh, okay. So we get higher than yeah. Franklin County, okay. Yeah, we have both. Okay, so let me, let me think about maybe adding some aging there. We don't wanna make it too long. That's always the balance. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, if the, if people end up spending too much time reading the upfront material, yeah, they may just skip answering some of the questions. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So why don't we we'll move on right now from that, but we can always circle back to it. And you can also always email me uh, if you have any real thoughts or comments on that section. Um, all right, so to the actual survey, oops, where'd it go? So just some generic questions first, just to understand who is responding to the survey. Um, you know, are you a short timer? Do you just move to town? Have you lived here for a long time? Yeah. And then do you own or rent? There's not a whole lot of rental properties in town, but it would be good to know if we are capturing some of that population. So we know that we are representing some of the renters in town. I did have this question, like I was, I was really, at least I could figure out the value of questions two through six in terms of, you know, getting a breakdown between owning and renting and kind of perceptions of affordability related to monthly costs. Um, I'm probably gonna ask this question a lot, but like on question one, how long have you lived in your current home? Could you help me understand like why, you know, how would getting, a set of answers to a question like that help us. Like, and, and I'm just really trying to make sure that we cut away any flab from the, from the question. I mean, there's so many questions that would be interesting to ask and I'd love to know the answer to, but we could make this a 30 question survey. So I, I, I'm going to sort of advocate for um, parsimony and really looking at each question heart rigorously through the lens of, you know, how important is it to what we're trying to do to get an answer to this question? So I would say that's one of the questions that I would say is potentially not necessary. The, the intention behind that question is to understand if you've been living in town for a long time, 
you know, is and you find things unaffordable, is it because you're a senior citizen maybe and that's why your income is now limited or, you know, has, has, are we finding that a lot of people who live in town are fine in terms of affordability, but all of the people who just moved to town are really having a hard time. And what, yeah. you know, what do we extrapolate from that? Is this yes. an issue for new people or is it primarily an issue for older people who've, who've been there for a while and have that equity in their homes? So that's kind of what we're getting at, but I, that, this is one of the questions that I think could be superfluous. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts on that. I mean, way down at the end, you get a, at least some demographic information. So you could correlate to some degree, you know, if it's about age, the relationship between age and how people answer questions two through six. Like I do see like, two through six is kind of needy collectively. We need to get a sense of owning versus renting. For renters and owners, we need to get a sense of what they, you know, as best as they can. And as an owner coming up, you know, putting a number on my monthly costs, including everything, it's, you know, not a straightforward exercise, yeah. right? Um, and then this question about, to what extent do you feel your current housing is affordable? So I really, really like questions at least two through five, and but the, it wasn't. I, I'm still struggling with. I mean, I might recommend dropping question one unless there's a really strong argument for how knowing about time. You know, there might be better ways, better questions that would surface the concerns of newer residents versus older residents. Sure, I'm open to that. Does anyone have any arguments to keep it in? Because I'm also, I could go either way on this one. I guess it, it kind of helps you know what type of respondent you're getting to these surveys long-termers or recent people, so, but I. Yeah, but so you're sort of putting that in the demographic category and at the end we're getting age, household size, annual income. Um, right. Uh, you know, I'm sort of looking at questions 12 through 14 as your kind of demographic section and Okay, well, let me let's let's see if we can form because once we have the questions finalized, we're going to format it to see if we can fit it on as few pages if necessary yeah. as necessary. If yeah. that's a question that like bumps us onto the next page, it can go. Um, yeah. But if if otherwise, if we can make it off of it, well, maybe we we keep it, but we'll see. Natalie, you have a, you have a thought? Yeah, um, I think that as far as the questions go, this one is pretty straightforward, and it won't take up much brain space, like you were saying. Some of the other ones might. Um, it also, I think, is kind of like a nice transition to start into the survey. You're like, okay, do I own or rent? I know that one, check. And then you're kind of like in the right headspace for it. So if like you were saying, it makes it go on to the next page, like by all means, get rid of it. But it seems if it fits like a pretty easy, like not super time consuming or thought consuming answer. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. I agree. That's that is a real and, and Natalie, you were speaking about question one, right? Basically, sort of seeing right. questions one and two that are admittedly easy to answer. Oh yeah, know, sorry about that. No one thought, and two, kind of like a smooth entry to some of the harder questions. Yeah, exactly. And then you know they're hooked, they're invested, they're excited because <laughs> it is a great survey. Um, <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll move on. So uh, question three and four get at um, how much do you pay in housing? Um, it is a little hard if you're an owner to calculate that. Um, I think ballpark though, it shouldn't be too hard. We have, when we've done these surveys in the past, it, everyone answers the question. So whether they're close or not, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. So I think it's a good response rate. Um, it doesn't turn people away, at least. 
I have, I guess, lo looking at questions three and three and four. What difference is this going to make? How, how would we use this information? I, I think maybe the a, a simpler question would be: Are people having financial difficulties, either renting or living in their own home? Do do we care the the level of of financial difficulty? And how, how is that going to either? I don't know what you would do with that. You, so we. Want, there is some stuff we can do with it. So we do ask what your, um, your household annual income is. And so, you know, if you're not supposed to pay more than 30% of your housing, 30% uh, of your income on housing, because if you pay more than 30% of your income, that's considered unaffordable. And so we can cross tabulate. So if we know someone's income and we know what they're paying for housing, we can determine if these, if, you know, if they say that they are, um, their housing is affordable, we can actually check to be like, well, actually, technically, you're, you're not, you're paying too much and we need to work on this. Or yeah, they really is unaffordable. They're paying 50% of their income on housing. So it gives us a little more insight on that. And also, if we are going to be making recommendations in our plan, we need to make recommendations for, do we want to focus on, say, workforce housing, housing for people who are making close to the median income? Or does our survey show that people really need housing for um, you know, the, the very low income? If, do they need a lot of subsidies? And so those, that's how we can tailor our recommendations by knowing how much they make and also how much they're paying for housing. Does that make that's, sense? Uh, okay, but maybe we'll get too many categories here. I, I don't know. That's also valuable data to have for grant writing um, from a town employee perspective. Is it? No. And I'll just say that I, I really saw the value of answers to questions three and four um, in terms of how those answers would be related to answers to like two and five as well, you know, because you're running these, you're going to be running these correlations across different, you know, question, pairs of questions and groups of questions. And I think trying to get a sense of at what level do respondents start to, you know, if we see an association between, say, you know, the thousand to fifteen hundred dollar level and um, answers in question five to like my housing costs are unaffordable, I think that becomes important. I think the questions three and four in and of themselves are not super useful, but knowing how those answers um, co-occur with uh, answers to other questions, that's where we get some insight. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so then moving on to question five, how affordable is the current housing for you? So this is just kind of based on perceptions. Um, what do they think? Because it can vary. Um, and I think just, but even if people, it may not be affordable, but if they feel it's unaffordable, that's also important to know um, in terms of what recommendations we can make. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on that question? Okay. Um, so the next question, number six, is you know, so it's more data gathering that we can then cross tabulate. Where do you live? So are you in a single family home, a duplex? Um, and then this is questions for you for the committee. I don't, there aren't any multifamily units in town. I don't, not to my knowledge. Not that I know of. Okay. Not, not more than, not more than four housing units. There are some three and four. Okay. So we can delete the more than four. Yeah. All right. And then I don't, there may be some condos. Megan, it occurs to me that um, maybe putting like an in-law apartment or an ADU would be an important category. Are those allowed under zoning? I can't remember. They are yeah, allowed they are. under zoning. Yes, maybe. Uh... We'll refine that language. I'll highlight it for now, but we'll add that. Okay. Um, and then, um, Brian, I know you had a question about this in terms of the next couple of questions get at flight risk. Uh, are, are people likely to leave town because of mm -hmm. affordability issues? Um, and 
I think you had said this might be a question that you thought you could take out. I'm going to argue no, but, but feel free to persuade me otherwise. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> because if, if people are planning to move and if for, it's for one of these reasons, we can tailor recommendations. So if people need to downsize and there's not smaller accessible homes for them to downsize to, we need to know that because that could be a recommendation to make smaller homes that are um, more accessible, or if we need to provide um, you know, more affordable housing, whether it needs to be duplexes or uh, you know, uh, houses that are helped pay for by the housing trust, things like that. I think it's important to know for recommendations that we eventually want to make, um, but, but feel free to tell me your thoughts on that. So I'm, I'm processing that response. One of the things that was salient in my mind is I know a young couple that moved to Waitley about a year ago into West Waitley. And now they're leaving Waitley, you know, they're relocating to, I think, Southampton. And I was curious, you know, like, hey, like, why'd you leave? And they're like, well, you know, we needed to do all this work to turn this house we bought into our dream home and it was gonna to be too expensive. And, we found something much closer to our dream home and stuff. So this was kind of in my head and thinking like, well, all right, so here's a person who would say, well, I'm planning, you know, I'm planning to move out of town and their primary reasons don't have anything to do with affordability. Um, I mean, I, I see the point about if answers to question seven are then linked to in question eight, you know, the, the motivation for leaving. Like if, they, if they're planning on leaving, is it really due to affordability issues? And if so, what are the, like, you know, if people are leaving because the, they think the property taxes in town are too high, I mean, that's an affordability issue, but we're not really getting at that. So I was, I was just, I was struggling with the whole flight risk scenario and like, what are we trying to understand? And I think my, my goal is to, what recommendations can we create and formulate for this plan that we know that the people have responded that there's issues with? So that's kind of what's always in the back of my, my mind is, is you know, not only uh, what are the recommendations that we need and which ones do we know that based on what the data says, but also what do actual residents say in terms of issues. Right. So um, I just added one possibility is what you made me think of is when you, Waitley has a lot of older homes and maybe upgrading them, bringing them up to code yeah. could be issues. So I'll, add, I'll finesse the wording for that, but that could be a good option as well. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have any thoughts on those? Um, and then, so the next couple of questions are really geared toward the recommendations section of the housing production plan. So we are gonna have to make recommendations for short-term, near, you know, middle-term and long-term for the town. And we need to have political buy-in for those. We don't wanna make recommendations, you know, we don't wanna say build a 50, you know, 100 unit apartment complex. That's not gonna fly, even though it's not possible. But, you know, we don't want to make recommendations that people are like, oh, forget this housing plan. This is ridiculous. We want stuff that we know people are okay with in terms of concept. Um, and so trying to understand that is the next point of the next couple of questions. So, you know, what do residents think that they need and what are they okay with? Are they okay with having um, duplexes in town? Are they okay? Well, we already have accessory dwelling units allowed, so that's okay, but maybe we need more of them and maybe we need some grant programs to help foster them. Are, are residents okay with that? You know, I, I just did this for another town and they were not okay with accessory dwelling units, it turned out. The surveys very clearly showed that that was not a concept that was okay with them. And so I think that this can be very illuminative in terms of that perspective. Um, but let me know if you have any thoughts and if there's any strategies that like say the planning board would like to work on and be included, then we can include that to see what the political waters are showing for that. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question. Yeah. What would the argument be against accessory, the accessory dwelling units? So um, some people are afraid that 
particularly in towns that are close to UMass, it'll become student party places with 50 cars in the yard. And um, it, it's, mo it's a lot of it is student fears I see. Uh, in the appearance of what things look like. Okay. It, and I'll expand on that a little bit um, because towns have, you know, being on the planning board and I've looked a lot at our own zoning laws related to accessory dwelling units and those of nearby towns. And towns vary a lot based on how much they insist that the people who live, well, A, that the people who live in either the accessory dwelling unit or the main house are the owners of the property. Like they're trying to get, avoid like transience, right? You know, in the sense of people who are going to be living there and they don't really, they don't have a commitment to the town. They're not going to care for their property well, keep it up, that sort of thing. So. I see. Okay, yeah, as, as a student, um, it's just so hard to find housing that I feel like if yeah. Waitley were more open to that, it could be a good source of, of more, more money. Yeah, but, and it's an excellent and I, way for older people to stay in their homes too by creating extra units to help supplement their, you know, their yeah. costs. It, it, it can be a very, very good thing for towns. It's really how it is rolled out to the public and the perception. Um, doing a lot of public outreach goes a long way. Um, but right. if you have Thank a few, you. sometimes if you have a few squeaky wheels, it can derail things. And so making sure you educate well can go a long way. So on this question, Megan, I was thinking again about thinking about how you analyze answers to this question in relation to answers of, to some other questions in the survey. So for example, for a person who responds to the survey as, I'm fine, you know, I can afford my housing. Um, that kind of, I mean, how that, a person like that, you might say a a comfortable person in town without financial concerns might have a very different perspective on answering question nine here. Um, whereas somebody who answered that earlier question like, boy, I'm really feeling the strain of my current housing. Um, and now, you know, I see that there's a high need in Waitley for say accessory dwelling units. I think that, that looking at those associations matter a lot. And so I'm kind of asking, is that sort of part of how you analyze this data and to try to suss out those kinds of relationships? Yeah, definitely, For at least for some of the questions. I think it's not as important as these two, the number nine, number 10, because of we just need to understand also the, the you know, it, are these politically okay in town, you know? because it's not, while well, it's gonna be very important to know that the people who are in need of affordable housing are really saying that they want duplexes or they want X. That's really good to know and we need to go to the mattress for those. But we also need to make sure that the rest of the town is gonna to be okay with that. Yeah. Um, and we know what type of battle we would have ahead of us if we really wanna go and make it zoning okay for duplexes. Things like that. So I think we would definitely look at it, but um, for these two, I'm more concerned just about all of the responses and what do people favor or not favor. Okay. Um, can I can I bring up a question about that one? Please. Um, uh, two questions actually. One is um, to Brant's point. I think it was Brant's point. To Brant's point, the. Um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, would it be helpful to add some more language to this STEM question that sort of says like, um, like if, if we were gonna, you know, we're gonna imagine we were gonna add 30 housing units in um, Waitley, what, in what form would you like to see them in so that you're actually forcing people to, to mm. choose it, you know, to choose something instead of saying not needed, not needed, not needed to every option if they don't necessarily um, need it themselves. I, I don't uh, like that idea. I mean, cause I could imagine the, you know, the person who feels like 
they don't have an affordability problem and they don't know anyone who does. Um, so they see a low need for everything in question nine. So how helpful is that? <laughs> yeah, that's Because what you're really trying to get at is for, for people who are doing fine, what are they, if, if Waitley was going forward, I like what we're, is it Tamsin? Is that yeah. am I pronouncing your first name? Mm -hmm. um, by sort of forcing them to think, well, we're gonna be adding X number of units. You know, so you don't get to say no to that. But what you do get to do is have some input into what, you know, what kind of units they are, your rank ordered preference. Ranking, I think, is a powerful tool in a survey. Great suggestion, Tamsin. Thank you. I'm just going <laughs> to jump in. Um, I'm on the Buckland planning board, and we went through a housing plan and then did some zoning changes. And um, based on what didn't work so well in Shelburne, we were sort of encouraged not to put any specific numbers on things because people dwell on that too much. Uh -huh. So I'm wondering if um, maybe word it in a way like just add additional housing in Waitley or something rather than having people suddenly. Yeah, it's a great point. I think if people were told 30 more units are going to be built in Waitley, they'd freak. <laughs> right. And yeah. yeah. Um, all right, well, we'll work on that wording, I think, but that's a, not a bad point of, of making them really realize that the housing types need to be decided. Okay. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Uh, number 10. Um, so going, going along with that is how and where should that new housing be developed? Um, some towns want it in their village centers, some don't care. So this kind of gets to the political sense. I know you're also constrained with water and sewer, so that really does drive development. Um, but I don't know, what are, what are your thoughts on this, anyone? So I had a thought about, um, you know, maybe changing along existing roads to um, along Route 5 and 10. I mean, this is like the main, the main drag through town, you know, that bifurcates the town. It's a state road. It's got commercial districts, you know, along it. The thing about, uh, my feeling about along existing roads is that there's people like, people who live on some of the scenic roads like Chestnut Plain and North Road, they'd be like, oh my God, no. <laughs> But I think there, especially if we're trying to get at what might people in town or respondents to the survey be receptive to. So I think, so maybe that's a good point. We need to reword that. because I, I think that, and I could be wrong, but I think the intent of the long existing roads was to, a lot of the current developments happening through A&R development. Um, so as long as you have the frontage along any road, you can develop. Um, and so maybe we need to reword this to make it more clear that this is A&R development, that just the type that can happen. I don't know how many people outside of say planning board Arcana would know what an A&R is. I know. I barely, well, that's I'm why we planning board, I barely know what an A&R is. Right. So that's why it's not why we didn't write it, but I wonder if we can rephrase it in a way that maybe conveys that without getting the technical aspect. And then what we could do is, um, add another one that says along you know main roads like route five and ten yeah all right i will work on the finessing of that wording well you know the the other area that we see more housing well is is the adus or or there's also flag lots flag lots can be along any existing road as long right. as you meet the zoning requirements Yep. So I think that that was what that kind of was getting at with that first question. So I'll, we'll figure yeah. out how to word that. Yeah. Um, and then, so the new development in village areas, do do people know Waitley Center, West Waitley? Do we need to have put road names? What would what, what would your town call those areas? Does that work? I think Waitley Center is clear, but I'm not sure West Waitley is clear. That's that's a big area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
what what other are there other like kind of sub village names that people would be aware of or no that you can say no we could, we could just leave it at Whaley Center well I I would I would go back to reuse existing buildings within a village that's not the only place we have vacant buildings and and I guess I would say maybe reuse existing buildings and and there's town-owned property that could be used for housing as well. Yeah. Uh, you see buildings and, and town property. That's a great point. We're trying to, we have what the center school, Fred, and the blue school that we're trying to. Yeah, DeMaio property and other. Yeah. yeah. We don't have the blue school anymore, but we do have uh, other properties. Oh, really? We don't have the blue school anymore. Yeah, I believe it's privately owned now. Right, but but there may be a role for the town in in uh, helping that get developed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so so I, would, I don't know what West Waitley is either. So I, okay. I think I have a clear idea of what Waitley Center is, but I have no clue where. That's fine. I can't imagine West Waitley being kind of thought of as a village center. I don't know if you need that that statement in there at all. You develop you know, it, well. This entire line? It should be. There's there's limited space in the Whaley Center for new development. I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Okay, so so um, it's up. You guys know the, the the town better. So should we? Well, also it's it's a historic area, so I don't know if it's even allowed. Okay, yeah. so are there, so I guess what I want to know is, are there areas in town where new development could be focused? Like, I guess what we're looking for is your options are, you can just kind of let development go everywhere, wherever it's allowed, or are there certain nodes that we want to focus development in and should we call those out? So just from the planning board's perspective, I think we've talked quite a bit about expanding, um, maybe making provisions for more dense housing options and subdivisions along 510. Okay. And I think that's rooted in this, this sense that the Waitley Center is, you know, we're not going to be able to really add housing in Waitley Center um, and that people, people's sense, people's sense of, ownership of 510 um, and wanting to preserve the character of Waitley for parcels along 510 has a very different feel than pretty much any other road in town. Okay, that makes sense. So I took that out and then we'll focus on the five and 10. Okay. I wonder too, the, um, this might not be a question for this type of survey specifically, but um, if this sort of question might be good for participatory mapping, either at events or um, at any other time where people are gathering and there might be a, a place for us to put up a map with sticky notes, et cetera. Are you guys doing a, a master plan update? I feel like I heard you were, no? I would love to do a master plan update, but it's coming, I think, in the future. <laughs> Okay, because that, that would be a really great, um, some towns are starting them right now, and so that would be a good opportunity for that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to slow you down for just a second, and re related to that last question, or that um, response option that we just deleted. Yeah. Um, was that question getting at, like, if we decided we did value infill in village centers, that we would consider zoning changes as an as an option for um, increasing like the ability to build where we want to. Because Waitley Center is one of the places that has um, water. I know it doesn't have sewer, but it has water. And so um, there are fewer constraints yeah. on building there and building more densely. My response to that Tamsin is that um, it doesn't have a lot else going for it. I mean, in terms of, yes, it's walkable, but you can't really walk, you can't go shopping. You know, there's not a lot to, um, not easy access to public transportation there. So I think doing infill 
in Waitley Center just wouldn't make a lot of sense, but doing infill along the 510 corridor would. Okay. And I just think the whole sense, Waitley sense of its historic character and all of that. I mean, just looking what go, is going on in Northampton with the riots they're having over infill just outside of town. You know, you bring that to Waitley Center. I think, I think that's kind of a, uh, I think that's a third rail. Okay. Um, and then we also ask about kind of generic, you know, maybe you want new subdivisions and building lots. Um, I would tick, tick off the word roads, leave just subdivisions. Yeah, creation of new subdivisions and building lots. Okay. That last row, Megan, which refers to a bylaw, which, you know, again, even as a planning board member, I'm barely familiar with. How many respondents are even going to know what that is? I mean, I might, it's a great question, but I don't know for if it's a good question for a general audience. I don't I don't think it's necessary. I would delete it. Um, what if I just took out that? What if I just where houses are clustered to protect open space? Um, would that make it? more amenable or mm. still too much? I mean, I like the thought that, it, I mean, it's, it would be worth knowing if how much people value open space as part of a solution to affordable housing, but it's feeling a little, still feeling a little overloaded to me. Okay, that's fine with me. Um, Especially since we have like this other, you know, it's always good that we have a place for people to put in other ideas. Okay. You're not worried about people saying no to subdivisions because they're all types of subdivisions are being grouped together. Yes, and I, I sure am. Um, do I think I, I maybe again as a survey design point? I don't know that asking people specifically, like, well, how would they feel about subdivisions that have, you know, essentially we're saying, well, well, maybe you would do not support creation of new subdivisions and building lots, but there's another thing we could put here that people would score more highly, like what if, subdivisions what if just, with lots of open space. Yeah, I was gonna say that. What if it was just, um, cluster housing that preserves open space, like something really short like that. Interesting, yeah, I could see that. Okay. Creation of cluster housing or new, of new cluster housing that preserves um, preserves open space. Okay, we'll work on that, we'll, we'll finish that. Monty, I think that's, it, it could, it could help reveal how much people are concerned about loss of open space. Okay. Is it worth um, clarifying what subdivision means? It could be. Because yeah. I'm not entirely sure what, what you mean by that. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, like and also that word has a really negative connotation. Okay. Yeah, just parenthesis a few like a few words or a new okay. word if there's a better one. Good point. I mean, okay. maybe instead of yeah, instead of using a a, a word like subdivision, you know, like something like converting more, you know, converting larger parcels of land to, um, you know, larger parcels of land that can only have a single family house into smaller parcels that can have smaller, yeah, probably was it's very worthy. Yeah, I was unclear about whether you meant the subdivision of the land itself or of the actual houses. 
Okay, we'll clarify that. We'll wordsmith that one. Um, okay, strategy. So this also gets to what recommendations of the town is the town going to be okay with. Um, so I was hoping Catherine would be here because she is on the community preservation committee, but um, I can follow up with her with questions on this. Um, how would the since that is a great tool the town has that a lot of towns don't have? How would how do people want to target that money? Um, and so these are some options for that. Um, I'm not sure if some of them are currently being used or not. So we were going to ask these questions, but I, I'll follow up with Catherine on that unless you guys know any of these answers. Um, and then some other strategies could be uh, purchasing land. The housing trust could do that for the purpose of affordable housing development. And, then, and also they can help with converting existing housing and amending zoning. Are there any strategies that say the planning board is interested in that we, you'd want to test out? Well, you've already got the one about, uh, uh, oh, I, oh, I misread it. Something about accessory dwelling units, like expand, um, expand um, or thinking of a better word, but basically promote or encourage more construction of um, accessory dwelling units. I'm a little concerned in question 11 about um, the average respondents familiarity with community preservation funds and, and all of that. You know, again, there's a little bit of insider ball here. Like, could these, could these be worded really more to be like, I mean, what we're really talking about in, in the first line is and again, the word subsidy has also got negative connotations. So I'm not, I'm going to use it, but I'm not going to recommend that particular word. But basically, the first one um, is about, you know, providing, you know, financial assistance to first time home buyers. The second one is really about, um, again, financial assi assistance to renters or subsidies. Um, the third line is really um, a very interesting one. And I, and I worry that this is an aspect of affordability that we are almost completely blind to, which is, um, and the survey is not doing much to help us with, like how much of people's perception of affordability is related to, or unaffordability is related to the amount of investment they need to make into their homes to, keep them up, um, are the utilities too high, that sort of thing. So, I've, so I would not use phrases like continue to, because as Tamson points out, it, it begs the question, well, gee, I didn't even know we were doing that to begin with. So I just, um, just say, you know. Rather than, than then, then say say that, and I guess it's the the assistance is not only going to come from the town, but from from Franklin County, and maybe it should be worded something like provide information on funds available for rental assistance and energy uses, make it more more visible that there are other avenues to get this, rather than just saying that the town has money to do this. Right, which may never happen, and or community there's there's businesses out there, agencies out there that do provide that, right. and maybe that's it's uh, information exchange that needs to take place. People want more information on what they how they can uh, get these other funds to help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I highlighted it's not showing, but we'll um, I, I'll work on the wording for that. You know, I would take take out community preservation funds from the from the, the the first one there. Yeah. I wonder too if this is going to be electronically distributed. You might be able to just hyperlink it for folks who might have questions about it. Yeah, but then you're <laughs> that has another disincentive, Anna. All right. Now, um, first of all, Matt, how many people are going to go click on that link? And if they go click on that link and now they leave the survey and they get distracted, do they come back? I could put it at the end of the survey. Like, thank you for yeah. taking the survey. If you'd like to learn more, 
Yes. Great. Okay. Based on the discussion, it seems like maybe an option should be, or the second to last option should um, be changed to something about converting existing town property that's not already housing into affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Repurposing. And I'll tell you, Megan, this question 11, you know, I, when I looked at it, I thought like, I mean, Megan, you've done these housing production plans before, right? This is not your first time. It's not no. your first radio. And FERCOG's done a lot of these. So you kind of know the drill. So it seems like you probably already know the top five to 10 housing strategy, you know, yeah. putting Waitley aside, you kind of already have a set of answers. Like these are the kinds of things that have been used in other towns to address those towns' perceptions of, you know, what they think their affordability problems are. And now I think, of course, part of the survey is to try to get a feeling for what a Waitley residents think our particular problems are but the likelihood that we're going to be so unique in Waitley, I know Waitley likes to think of itself as extremely unique, but the chances that our problems have never been encountered before are very unlikely. So I'm wondering like when you crafted and drafted question 11, we're already sort of thinking about like these are the, in, in terms of other recommendations these reports have come in with, you know what, why don't we try to check with people about the top five or 10 of those? And... Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's why we included the community preservation questions because not many towns have that. And so we want to know, you know, th those are probably what we're going to recommend is that the community preservation funds should be targeted to first time home buyers and it should be helping with rental assistance, things like that. Um, and so that's why I was hoping for Catherine and maybe I'll, I'll make sure I talk with her this week or next week if I can catch up with her just to see where, you know, if she's been having trouble using funds, the committee, um, and if they need more support for one way versus the other, um, mm -hmm. then this can help with that. Um, your town is very actually already really ahead of the curve. Usually we recommend create a housing trust, get CPA, create, you know, do ADUs. You guys already have those checked off. So, you know, really this is for you. If, if there's something that you want to test the waters on, this is a good spot to put it in. And you don't have to answer tonight. If you want them all over, we're not going to, you know, we have, we've got the rest of the week at least until we finalize this. I noticed that I'm... Many of these uh, statements here, questions you you just use affordable housing. Is is that what this is all about, or or should it be affordable and more housing, or affordable and multi-unit housing? What what are we getting at? Just affordable housing, because people could say, well, it's affordable, we don't need it, so. So the, yeah, the housing production plan is geared towards affordable housing, and particularly subsidized housing, but we wanted to use the word affordable housing because it's more inclusive of not just subsidized housing. Um, and so a requirement of the state is to focus on affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to, if there are other housing issues, then certainly we can um, put those in and ask people about them or make sure they're highlighted, but the, the requirement of the plan is to focus on affordable housing. Mm -hmm. but, but all new housing developments say don't have to include affordable units. There's only a certain percentage, right? Right, so I, I, don't, um, I, don't remember, I don't remember your zoning if you have requirements for affordable housing and subdivisions, but if you, that could be a recommendation. You know, if you create a subdivision of 30 units, certain percentage of them needs to be affordable. Um, and if that's not already, then that should be a recommendation. Yeah. But isn't that a requirement of some of these uh, funds that are available to promote housing or affordable housing? That... Yes, yeah, so some are that is required, yes. So for like chapter 40B housing, you do have to set aside 20% of the units at right. least to be affordable. But 
you don't have to do that. You can still, you know, do five unit housing or you could do it on your own, the town or, you know, a private developer can come in without having to do the big affordable housing projects and still create one or maybe two units. You know, every little bit does help. And they don't even have to be super subsidized. They could just be for targeted for workforce housing right. for those making just kind of um, the middle in income. Uh, well, if you need to focus on affordable, that's fine. But I, I think there's people in town that may say, well, we don't need affordable housing. We just need housing, period, mm -hmm. or more housing or housing units. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do have at the end, you know, additional thoughts about housing. So I'm hoping that people will, yeah. that's when they'll write those things and let us know their thought. You know, we don't need affordable. We just need more whatever their thoughts are. Okay. So are we getting at that picking up on this Fred's theme? Are we getting at the, the need for, or the openness in Waitley for um, increasing, you know, more dense housing, right? I mean, Waitley's only so big, there's only so many parcels of land. I, I'd have to really, I, look at the zone, our zoning bylaws to see to what extent we really ex insist on, you know, low density housing in town. You know, we might, our, our bylaws may be such that we insist on large lot sizes, single family homes, you know. You can take a look at that and let you know. Um, I think part of it is mostly driven by lack of septic, you know, lack of sewer that's really what's going to drive density. So if if we want to know if the town's open to installing infrastructure that would support it, that's another question. Oh. That's a big question. So we can't, and this is just my own ignorance, we can't we can't do sept on-site, you know, septic systems that could manage uh, I mean that especially here where I live in East Waitley, it ground percolates. <laughs> you could, well. yeah, you absolutely could, especially, yeah, you've got some nice farmland that will do, handle that fine. So that certainly could, so we could ask, you know, are you okay with more density? Well, I think from a planning board perspective, knowing, getting a sense of, you know, from whoever answers the survey, how they feel about you know, things like infill or just increasing density. Um, my intuition would be weightly typical and long-term weightly residents are going to be against increasing density, but they might be willing to see that happen in certain places like on the 510 corridor. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll work on the wording of that, but maybe something like that. Okay, so that, and then otherwise we just have some demographic questions that kind of gets at who's answering the survey. Um, I think we have a really good survey here. So we'll go back and finalize that. It is seven o'clock, so let me just zip through some stuff. Um, so we're gonna work on finalizing the survey over the next week. So if you have any other thoughts or questions, please let us know. Um, just email either Hannah or me, don't include the whole group. Um, and then we'll, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, I will talk to Catherine to make to see what the Community Preservation Committee, if what their thoughts and needs are, to see if there's any specific strategies we should get that on that on the survey for them. Um, and in terms of distribution of the survey, we had talked about. Let me really quickly share this if I can. Um, we had talked about getting the news information in the newsletter. That's May 18th, so I've got those details. So we'll definitely do that. Um, we're going to, I'll print out paper copies of the survey, make sure they're in some key locations, and then make sure that they're distributed at town meeting, which I believe I wrote down is May 18th as well. Is that right? Town meeting? Uh, I'll check the date, um, but we'll make sure we have paper copies in flyers as well. So I have created a flyer that people with QR codes and the link can people can click on. So if they don't want to actually take the hard survey, they can still get the electronic copy. So we'll make sure we have copies of that everywhere. Um, 
Is there a place at the transfer station to put flyers up? Yes, there is. Oh, is okay. there? I'll get yes. some flyers and we can put that up there as well. Um, Hannah, you'd mentioned talking, maybe potentially reaching out to CISA about the farm workers. I can translate into Spanish. I don't know. And maybe they have ability to contact. Yeah, I haven't had the chance to reach out yet, but I'll do that this week. Okay. Um, and then I have a contact at Mass Hire. I was thinking I could see if they can distribute the surveys at the different manufacturing companies in town. We historically have had bad luck with that. I've tried to work with the, um, for the FRTA on getting surveys to them and it's been notoriously difficult. So I will do my best, see if we can get surveys to them, but um, we'll see what happens. And then I was gonna post on Lisa Furcog's Facebook. Are there other um, Twitter, Facebook venues I should be aware of? Bately has a Facebook page and also a town website. You know, as far as manufacturing companies, you know, we have two major ones in town. I don't know if that's, you know, Yankee Candle and then there's uh, Covestro in the Industrial Park. If it's not, you know, overwhelming companies, if that makes a difference to. Yeah, just getting into them is pretty hard. Uh, we we have contacts. We know who they are. They just, they are very reluctant to hand out surveys to their employees. Okay. I, I can try. Okay. Monty, you have a question? Um, yeah, two things. One is um, I think the library is a good place to reach a lot of people. Okay. And um, and also I'm wondering, um, is it okay if two people in the same household answer the survey or do you want it to be one per household? Um, I don't think I care. I think perceptions are different for everyone in the household. So let's, and not everyone is married or a part of a family in the same in the same house unit. So I think that's fine. Let's have anyone who wants to answer it. Okay. Um, so, sorry. Could, could you, Megan, could you send us the, the final version of the survey before it goes out just to, so we can see what it looks like? Uh, and if we have last minute, comments, I guess, to get them to you before our next meeting or what, or whatever, whatever your plan is to do that. I don't know. Yes, I will do that too. I will send that out. Um, okay, so I think we've run out of time. Um, Tamsin, I was going to go over some quick findings of the sections that we have done. Tamsin, do you have any quick highlights? I know I was, in, I was intrigued by the fact that Waitley's taxes are actually one of the lowest in the state, which I didn't realize. They're ranked 255 out of 350, which I was surprised. Um, that's one fun fact I found. Yeah, I can show you. Um, I can show you the results of the um, section one, the housing. I mean, the demographic and housing stats. If you give me screen sharing. Oh, I'm on it. Great. Um, okay, you should be able to now. Um, okay, so um, in this breakdown of income by age, it's um, interesting to note down on the left that there's um, quite a number of people over 65 who are really low income. I think we all know that, but it's helpful to see visually. Um, we already went over this in the beginning of the survey, but 25% um, uh, or a over 25% of both homeowners and renters are cost burdened in Waitley. Um, the um, median single family price, sale price has been going up as it has everywhere, um, but it's quite high in Waitley compared to Franklin County and um, Hampshire County. And when we look at what um, the median household income is for homeowners and renters as compared to the price of housing using this chart on the right. Um, we can see that um, what is um, the like the median household income, this 100% um, area median income, um, a person with that level of income can only afford a house of $250,000, which is um, currently $130,000 less than what's available in Waitley. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a big gap um, in what's affordable for people living in Waitley on the incomes that they're 
on and what is currently being, you know, this current sale prices and rental prices. And that gap has been increasing um, over time. Um, and it's that that trend started pre-pandemic. So the pandemic has sped it up, but it's been um, it's been a reality for homeowners or interested homeowners and renters for a long time. Um, and this UMass Donahue Institute report that I shared the links to in the chat um, talks about how Franklin County is less affordable than Hampshire or Hamden counties um, when you look at that gap. And then. Yeah, I, um, as you know, you're mostly a, a town of single family homes um, as compared to the, yeah, in the Franklin County has a lot more as a whole has a lot more diverse um, housing forms than Whaley does. Is that helpful? Yeah. And Will all of this- share that around? Just, you did that really quick, Tamsin. And I yeah. You have a chance to sort of sit and totally. digest this a little bit more and maybe yeah. send some questions. What, what, one thing that, that, that keeps coming up at various meetings that, uh, about data that reflects Waitley and people are, are skeptical of, of whether that includes all of Waitley because we, if you go by post offices, zip codes, mailing addresses, we have four post offices to deliver mail to Waitley. And, you know, people are saying that uh, your, your data is biased because you don't include all of the residents in Waitley. Now I know, unless you go by the realtors that, that do by addresses, uh, maybe the census block data is what you're using for defining population and other uh, demographics. I think there maybe needs to be a statement somewhere in the report of what this data represents, because that's one thing people are skeptical of is it doesn't represent all of the town. If you go by post offices, addresses, uh, it, it's not really representative. Okay, thank you, Fred. That's good. We'll put that in. Okay. All right, so we're going to work on the survey, finalize that. I will get that out to you guys. Um, if, and then if you have any other ideas on how to distribute it through town, let me know. And we'll work on that. But I think we're in good shape. I think we're going to focus now is finalizing it, getting the survey out, waiting for the results to come in. And then as they come in, then we'll start drafting the other sections that, that kind of really helps inform the rest of the plan. Um, but our next meeting probably won't be for maybe a couple months as we're going to wait for the responses to, from the surveys to come in um, and then we'll analyze them, present the summary of the results and then the other chapters as we've got them done. So if that is okay with you guys, I think that's the plan we'll proceed with. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for taking your time this lovely evening. Um, I'll be in touch with the, the draft surveys and enjoy this nice weather. All right. Thank you, Megan, for your Thank work you. on this. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Right, Thanks, guys. Bye. bye.